folks. How are we doing? Good to see you. Lovely afternoon. Hi, Tish. Hi, Tish, twice. <laughs> Hi, Jill. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Catherine Kelly. Good to see you all. Look at that. Look at those lovely flowers behind me. I mean, come on. Just planted those for you guys. I did. Hey, John. Susan, you mean usual suspects, I think. <laughs> I like it. I like, I prefer typos to actual proper spelling. I like the people being creative. I hope you're having a nice day or evening or morning. 2.45 here. Lovely day. I'm only wearing my cap because it's actually quite sunny. And uh, I don't want to get sunburnt. My Irish face gets burnt quite easily. Broken arms, so make mistakes. Oh, I look forward to that, Susan. I'm not, I feel horrible that you've broken your arm. I really feel bad about that, but I want to see the typos. Hi, Luigi, Gail. Uh, we are going to find out where we are in a few moments. In about 50 seconds. Spin the camera around, the location will come on. Big secret. Ciao. Hi, Hillary. Lovely to see you all. About half a minute to go. The countdown begins. I said the other day that I don't say auditions anymore because uh, when I go to an audition and I tell people it's an audition, I feel the stress. So uh, I don't even say tour anymore, I say meeting. I've got a meeting with the Hago Voyagers at 2.45. I think that, that means that it takes the pressure off a bit. Bit of give and take. Yeah, Susan, don't say anything too embarrassing, but, you know, let, let the fingers fly on the one hand. Anyway, hi, Cynthia. Hi, Brilly. Welcome, everyone. It's Gerard here. So maybe uh, you, might, you might know me. If you don't, I'm Gerard. My, my job here is to try and give you a nice little walk around the part of London and it's a Gerard's footsteps so uh, I don't tell people in advance just in case things change signal or so on but also it's quite nice to think where will we go today we're obviously in London uh, otherwise I would have put that we were somewhere else in the world but we will be at some point we'll go traveling around but today we are in Victoria around Grosvenor Square and Grosvenor Gardens near Victoria Station. So we're going to have a walk and see a few of the theatres, see a cathedral, see a bit of architecture. And we've got about half an hour to do it. If you haven't used the platform before, there are buttons. You can take postcards. I'll try and give us uh, time in front of lovely things to take the postcards. And of course, there's a, a tip button. It's how we would make a living as Cynthia wonderfully beautiful Cynthia has just demonstrated uh, it's the only way really we really get paid and hey go get paid for the platform so you're very welcome to do that let us turn this around we're in upper Grosvenor Gardens at the moment in front of us you can see a lot of traffic we're on the edge of what we call the congestion charge zone in London so the congestion charge reaches from past Tower Bridge in the east to around here, which is SW1, Southwest 1. And if we followed the road all the way up, drove the place, we would reach Hyde Park and we would curve around Park Lane and then we would avoid the congestion charge so you don't have to pay £15 coming into London. So this is why you don't see as many cab drivers or delivery drivers on this road because their business is driving straight through the centre of London. Uh, cab drivers have you know, a, a right to drive through London, but these are just regular drivers here. We're in Upper Grosvenor Gardens in Victoria, named obviously after Queen Victoria. But I want to show you a sculpture by a man, Jonathan Kenworthy. Nice one. 
I wasn't going to come in this garden. I was going to go in lower Grosvenor Gardens. But I saw this as I was sat here earlier and I thought, here we go. It's called Lioness and Lesser Kudu. The garden opened in 2000. This was sculpted. Commissioned to be sculpted in around 98. I love it. It's not one of your, your regular ones to a major or a general or a duke or an earl. It's a lioness and a lesser kudu. Just in the centre, you might see one of the cabmen's shelters. They've been there since the late 1800s, those green buildings. And they were supposed to be on the side of the road, no bigger than a horse and carriage. So that normally handsome cab drivers, which is H-A-N-S-O-M, Joseph Hansom invented this cab, which was one horse and two seats. It doesn't mean that the cab drivers were really handsome, although I'm sure they were. But these are open from the morning to the early afternoon. And you can seat about 12 people in them, normally cab drivers. Yeah, not in my garden. I mean, I do love these sculptures. But I think not in many. Only 13 survived, Luigi has said. It's a shame, isn't it? We've seen so many. They must all be around where we walk together. I don't know if there are any on the outside of London. Okay, let's leave behind Lioness and Lesser Kudu. And we'll pop into Lower Grosvenor Gardens. Now, I was in Kew Gardens the other day and these flowers, these camellias and the magnolias are unbelievable there. The only problem is the signals shocking. So I would love to do a tour around Kew Gardens, but it might have to be a filmed one in advance and then do a live commentary. But they're all exploding with color at the moment. Tish is on a mission. To see all 13. Tish keeps going. Tish, you keep going on about Little Venice. <laughs> Tish is always Little Venice tour on every tour I do. Tish, you need to give me a bit of a break here. I'm doing my best for you. Tish knows I'm joking, by the way. What this relationship, I think. So we're coming up to Victoria Station, but we're going to go through Lower Grosvenor Gardens. Grosvenor being a canal. There was a canal running through here, the Grosvenor Canal. So you've got the Grosvenor Place, the Grosvenor Square, Grosvenor Gardens. But the canal is no longer here. Well, by the way, this was something I noticed as well. The Goring Hotel. I'll pop over if I can, just so we can see. I feel that I'm running here. Goring Hotel opened in 1910, obviously. Uh, the Union flag, the Ukrainian flags in the middle. One of the only hotels that's over 100 years old that's owned by, been owned by the same family. In 2011, when Kate Middleton was getting married, her and her family stayed here because Buckingham Palace was at the end of the road. They stayed here, the Goring Hotel. Lovely. Okay, pop into the Grosvenor Gardens. We've got half an hour to get through quite a bit. So lower Grosvenor Gardens. The, the other gardens are, are quite a simple one. These lower Grosvenor Gardens have been built in a bit of a French style. And there are a few nice sculptures in here. Uh, one of them by a man called Eduardo Chilida Essentials, who was from San Sebastian. And he was quite a well-known sculptor in his young days, but when he was in his early 20s, he had quite a bad accident, motorbike crash, and he was forced to only use his left hand. So you can see the fella there. I don't want to get in that fella's face. But there are two hands and the right hand is a bit withered and the left hand is strong 
So it's a sculpture of his own hands there. But the one on this side, which is, is just his right hand, there's nobody leaning on it. Just behind it, look at that shell hut. That's like a beach hut, but a little bit more fancy. French and British shells. So it's a bit of a French British cultural thing going on there. Okay. It's quite lovely, isn't it? So that's the hand he can work with. It's a cast and a sculpture of his own, own hand. Imagine being a sculpture and only being able to sculpt with one hand. It's amazing what people can do. Susan thought it was to do with pearly kings. It's not. This is a French style garden. And uh, they just used French and British shells. They're quite nice, aren't they? They're called shell huts. There's another one on the other side. Probably were restrooms, but not anymore. They're not, they're not needed anymore. There's a train station with three toilets just nearby. And there's the other one where the hermit lives. Yeah, maybe. Probably storage areas. Actually, there are some fellas here playing some table tennis. I can see in the far distance. That door is slightly ajar, it's slightly open. So maybe that's where they hired the equipment from. So it's literally a big shell hut just for a few table tennis bats and a few ping pong balls. Any shell huts in Little Venice? I don't know. That's Tish. Now, I have to be careful with my pronunciation here because I don't want to offend anyone. But this is Lower Grosvenor Gardens anyway, 1952. I'll just turn us around so we can see the entire garden from a distance because it is it's quite pretty and a real haven for people working in the Victoria area. This is a marshal from World War I. And his surname, from 1851 to 1929, F-O-C-H. The Marshal, I'm going to say Fosh, so I don't upset anyone. There he is. God, how? I don't want to, Sarah, I don't want to offend anyone. I would pronounce it Fosh. get a different view. That's the correct way. Thank you, Gabby. You're now my favourite. The architecture around here is very strange. I mean, some of it's amazing, but you've got these old Edwardian buildings and then something quite different in the middle of it. Yeah, Luigi said Norman Wisdom he did sleep here. He was nine years old. His parents split up. I believe he slept at the bottom of that statue. Just there. Good work, Luigi. Oh, look. It's a pub called the Shakespeare. It's a Green King, Ferry St. Edmunds. We're not going to talk about Shakespeare on this tour for once. But there it is. It wouldn't be a Gerard tour without mentioning his name just once. Uh, Green King have nearly 3,000 pubs in the UK. This is one that's right next to a train station. So you can probably imagine the kind of pub it is. Literally people just waiting with their luggage because they've missed the train. I think that's the same vibe as many of the theatres and the pubs and the landmarks that we visited. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Now we're at Victoria Station. It's one of the biggest, top three of the country. A great concourse there. Now there's a term, 
this used to be just an area where you'd have horses and carriages, but now it's one of the main bus stops in central London, around Trafalgar Square is one of the others. Opened in 1860. So really, it was designed just to be convenient. We're on the north side of the river, and you had three enormous stations which were on the other side. You had London Bridge, you had Waterloo Station, and there was another place which is not used now, but it was called the Bricklayer's Arms. And that was in Deptford in southeast London. And Victoria, well, we're north of the river. I suppose it's where the main areas of business and trade, government, most of the population were living north of the river as well. But it was originally called the Grosvenor Ter Terminus. So G-R-O-S-B-E-N-O-R, Grosvenor. It's just the way we pronounce things in the UK rather than Grosvenor. But there was a canal running straight through it. And to get south of the river, there's a Grosvenor Bridge, which is one of the bridges that most people, if you ask them, where's the Grosvenor Bridge? They wouldn't know because it's named after the old train station. So this was the Grosvenor train terminus, but it's now named London, Victoria. So the area we're in is actually named after the train station rather than Victoria being named after the area. And it's all named, of course, after Queen Victoria. And the other roads around here, you've got Buckingham Palace Road, Wilton Road, Grosvenor Gardens again, and Vauxhall Bridge Road. We could, we could go and visit Bonnie and Brighton. So it is obviously one of those train stations where you can get a bit further down to the south coast. We've got Southern Railway written right in front of you there. And it's home to the Gatwick Express. It became quite popular as a station. I do apologise there are buses in the way, but just coming round so we can get a look at it from the other side. For Pullman services, there's a New Yorker, George Pullman, and he invented this idea of sleeping, I suppose sleeping cars, where you could travel a long distance and have somewhere to sleep as well. And Victoria Station had many of them. Actually got 19 platforms. You know, that's a lot. Waterloo has 24, though. Grand Central. 56 or 44 platforms. 56 train tracks. Obviously, it's a lot bigger. Grand Central and a lot busier. But the inside of Victoria Station is enormous. Boat trains became very popular. So you've got your Gatwick Express but also the idea of getting on a train and it going straight to a port for a ferry or a cruise. The Orient Express would have come straight from here all the way down to the coast and then over to France. And then you would have caught the Orient Express in Paris, in Paris, and then traveled all the way if you wanted to Istanbul. The front of this, by the way, is from the early 1900s. It's been redesigned. Alfred Blomfeldt is the architect for the front of it. And of course, there are tube lines. It's not just a train station. Let me show you the Apollo Victoria. The Ambassador Theatre Group. One of six theatres in London, built in 1930. The architect was a man named William Edward Trent. He built the theatre for a group called the Provincial Cinematograph Theatres, which were an offshoot of Gaumont, which were a French theatre and cinema company. We had quite a few Gaumont cinemas here. But as you can tell, it's Art Deco. And it's showing wicked. 
was originally built as a cinema in 1930. There are quite a few theatres that we visited on our travels around the West End, the Cambridge Theatre around Seven Dials and the Adelphi that have this Art Deco look, but they were built as theatres. This was actually built as a cinema, a super cinema. And this look on this side is exactly the same on the other side. The two entrances, both identical. It's originally called the New Victoria Cinema, opened in October 1930. I'm going to go around to the other side of it now. One of the places that had a Hammond organ. Well, at least they've got me. Crimes against organs. So then a lot of these buildings, if they were built as theatres, they turned into cinemas in the 1930s. And if they were built as cinemas in the 1960s, they turned into theatres again. So it's very rare you find one building that's done the same thing throughout its history. During the Second World War, it was closed. The last film that was ever shown in the 1970s was The Legend of the Werewolf, Peter Cushing. This is the Victoria Palace in front of us. So this is where Billy Elliot was. The one we just passed, the Apollo Victoria, had the sound of music in 1981 with Honor Blackman, Michael Jason, but it was a concert venue for many years. The Victoria Palace here, they've spent a lot of money on this building recently. Starlight Express was on it there as well. Not the theatre we're talking about, but the theatre where we just passed, the Apollo Victoria Starlight Express, Bombay Dreams. Now they've spent a good amount of money, closed for a couple of years, and this Victoria Palace opened in 1911. It's one of the Frank Matcham theatres. By the way, can we appreciate Little Ben? That's designed in the style of the Elizabeth Clock Tower in the Houses of Parliament. I like that. That's Little Ben. cute, isn't it? Now, I would have that in my garden. Mini Ben. Yeah, Frank Matcham designed the Victoria Palace. Born in the 1850s, died in 1920. He's really known as the great, great theatre architect in the UK. There are many of them, but he worked on more than 90 theatres. And on our travels, if you've ever been with me in the West End, we've been past the Palladium, the old Hippodrome, which is now a casino in Leicester Square, the London Coliseum, the King's Theatre, Glasgow. And if you've ever watched Strictly Come Dancing, the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool, a lot of that was Frank Matchin's work. Yeah. We Benny. It started as a concert hall. So originally there was a hotel on this site. That was in the 1830s, and in the 1850s, it became known as the Moyes Music Hall, M-O-Y-S. Then it was renamed again. It was called the Royal Standard Music Hall, because the hotel beneath it was called the Royal Standard. There was a trend for building big theatres, and then they realised that the shows just didn't work in them. They were building a lot of smaller theatres in the late 1800s in the West End, in the early 1900s, like the Apollo, the Lyric, the Gielgud, and so on. And they were more suited to regular stage plays. The Ibsens and the Strindbergs worked better in a seven, 800 seat theatre. But this holds 2000, and it worked better as musical. 1911, with this building open, they put a sliding roof at the top of it. 
and it meant that during the intermission when they were using very hot lights they could just slide the roof across and cool the buildings down at the intermission that's an odd sight seeing london buses with no people well it's quite it's still quite busy on this side it's where most people walk but we're at quite a good time not everybody's finished work but they've all finished lunch so this was quite a good call by me yeah billy elliott was here for nearly 11 years and it's had four years of the great hamilton with a break in the middle for certain things two buses one past them not a soul in them yeah i think Tracy, they might have just left the train terminus. They're probably going to fill up somewhere. Okay. Let's walk down. As if we're going to Westminster Abbey, but we won't get that far. We're going to stop at Westminster Cathedral. People don't often see the cathedral. They see the abbey. The cathedral's a bit further down. Oh, yes. I was going to show you something. I'll do it properly when we cross the road. But that's the other side of the Apollo Victoria, which is exactly the same design. It's quite clever, the Art Deco style, the symmetry. But it's very rare you get a block where you can build on either side of the block and have other buildings either side of that. It's pretty clever. So if you get it, you see that it's the exact same design. So two entrances, and then the auditorium and the seating area for, well, they have two levels, the Apollo Victoria, which is a strange one, 2,328 seats and only two levels. MB has said, Jared, do you wear any particular brand of shoes for that walking you do on the pavement? Uh, I wear trainers as in running shoes? Interesting question, but just your regular soft soles. Okay, let's come round to Westminster Cathedral. I'll tell you a bit about it in advance. So we visit Westminster Abbey, so many people, but the mother church for Roman Catholics in England and Wales anyway, is Westminster Cathedral. The site for it was bought in the 1880s. The building opened for worship in 1903. Midnight Mass at Christmas, Luigi goes, Westminster Cathedral. My mum, who lives quite, from quite a distance from here, she, she used to come here just for services. It was quite nice, it's a bit of a journey, but something so epic about it. It's definitely in the top 50 largest churches in the world. This is a side view. And it is lovely. It's a neo-Byzantine style, made popular in places like Istanbul, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia. So it's a brick building. John Betjeman, the poet, said, good craftsmen have no need for concrete and steel, which I like. So it's true brick, open for worship in 1903. Still open, you don't have to pay to go in for a service. There is a tour that you can pay for, a regular service you don't have to pay for. It's red and white brick, there's some marble. I suppose in 1903, this building would have been quite foreign to British eyes. But it is enormous. I like to get blessed by Archbishop Nichols. Wouldn't we all, Luigi? I like that. I like your style. I like that. Let's try and get us up near to the front. As you can see, they're doing quite a bit of work at the front of it. But we should be able to see the ornate work right
never like to say too much outside of church. So you often see designs like this. Yugoslavia, Bulgaria. Thank you, Kelly. Istanbul, former Constantinople. It's nice, isn't it? There's a school here as well, St. Vincent's. I don't know how. There's no gap I can get through. It's not a forgotten church, as I said, it's one of, you know, it's one of the biggest in the world, but Westminster Abbey is often, often overshadows this. That's right, yeah, Luigi, good one. Hitchcock's foreign correspondent, the assassin, was pushed off this tower. Right, folks, here I am. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me for a little while. I hope that was kind of enjoyable. We haven't come to this area before. It was lovely to see you. Uh, thank you for any of your comments. Thank you for the contributions. It does help. It gets, it gets uh, well, it pays me to get here, which is quite important. And thank you, and maybe I'll, I'll see some of you later on in the West End. And we shall say thank you, Hilary. Lots of love to all of you. And look after yourselves, and look after each other. Maybe I will see you later on. Lots of love. Bye.